Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Running the Gauntlet. Today, we are finishing the gauntlets that are found within the first phase of the Curse of the Vampire DLC expansion. And that brings us to the longest gauntlet of the first five that are available to us, that being the Living Vampire. Now this is the gauntlet where you do unlock Morbius as a playable character, but we will be looking at the individual clear conditions for each phase of the gauntlet, as well as the rewards you receive once they have all been cleared out. So the first phase is pretty straightforward. There are a bunch of standard enemy grunts that you have to fight right off the bat. There will be a couple of mighty enemies that spawn in, as well as a couple of mini-boss characters that you have encountered from previous escapades through the story quest. Mainly Kamala Khan and Spider-Gwen, so as long as you are familiar with what they do and how they interact, you really shouldn't have any real difficulties with this one. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that as you defeat the boss characters, uh, Kamala Khan and Spider-Gwen, you will be receiving additional canisters that are explosive that you can use to help further your cause. The other thing that you do need to keep in mind is th periodically throughout all of these legs of the gauntlet, there will be uh, different enemies that spawn in that have aspects of the Curse of the Vampire with them. Uh, whether it is actual curses or enemies like this that have uh, emanating elemental effects or other things that make them a little bit more challenging than a base rate standard foe. But they are uh, manageable once you kind of get a rhythm for it and an understanding of uh, how they're meant to work and how you need to deal with them. So while we are waiting for this gauntlet to clear out, we do want to talk about two uh, important clear conditions here. The first is clearing this gauntlet once uh, and clearing all five phases of the gauntlet. That will grant you the first prize of 155 shield emblems. And the other is you need to score a total score of 450,000. Uh, and that is done just by progressing through and clearing out a bunch of these fights. Now, you should be able to get the score of 450,000 as you are pursuing the other two, as it does require you to loop back through the gauntlet a couple of different times. Uh, you should even be able to get about that score with just over two runs through the gauntlet. So, just be mindful as with any gauntlet you have, a finite amount of resources as to how many times you can revive members of your team and that adds to the challenge of getting some of these clears and this is the most trying of the ones that we've looked at so far but it is by no means impossible it just takes a little bit of time probably took me about 50 minutes to get through and clear all of these out in a single run so just keep that in mind as you're looking to gain the benefits from clearing these gauntlets. And we're just rounding out the last couple of enemies that we need to finish out here and move into the second phase of the gauntlet, which is going to be a fight against Electra, with the quirk being that there are a lot of enemies with increased damage, and we're introduced to a couple of more uh, reborn and cursed enemies such as uh, that first one that we saw that has kind of a poison element. If you have teammates that are using abilities that focus on uh, contact with the ground around the character or direct contact with the ground around the character, uh, do be advised that it's not going to be as efficient as that can uh, drag you out of that. There are also characters that will inhibit your ground movement speed, these ones that pull you in, and that does even include when you are flying past them. Uh, characters that explode upon being defeated, characters that heal enemies in the nearby area. So a lot of uh, new cursed uh, enemy quirks that you need to be mindful of as the uh, gauntlet progresses. There's also this one uh, that will cause you to gain or receive some damage back when you use standard attacks. Uh, so you want to make sure that you are making use of your abilities and synergies and possibly even EX attacks to take them out in the most efficient manner. 
or uh, you know you can also use some of the explosions that are made available to you from the environment in which you are encountering these enemies. Progressing into the chamber with Electra, uh, we are introduced to one final uh, type of enemy that we haven't really seen before, or an enemy effect that we haven't seen before, and that is enemies that will regain a portion of their own health as they deal damage to you or as you uh, sustain damage from incoming attacks. So that's a, a quirk that we've seen exhibited within the skill tree of our own characters, but it is interesting to see and important to remember that this can factor into these opponents that we are facing off as well if they have the right particle effect around them. And through all of this, just a reminder that these enemies, all enemies, will deal increased damage than what they otherwise normally would. Uh, moving on to uh, fight on Electra, though, uh, she's pretty straightforward as long as you're familiar with the boss fight progress and where you first encounter her. And with a couple more abilities and or synergy attacks, we'll have her down uh, to the point where we can progress into the third leg of the gauntlet, which is actually where we're going to talk about the third clear condition that you need to keep in mind. So with this third leg, it is a fight against Ultron, and with two main adjustments from the base fight in which you first encounter him. The first being that you will need to deal more damage to him by using extreme attacks and extreme attack damage, because that is the only real significant portion of damage that you can deal, uh, but you do have an accelerated EX charge. Uh, for this fight. The other is that right off the bat of these fights there are two opponents that have the heal aspect to them and will regenerate up Ultron's health making it impossible to move past that first phase unless you take them out. So you will need to sacrifice uh, at least two of your extreme attacks on them for the first go around to assure that you can take them out uh, or in move on to taking Ultron out as well. There are a couple more that spawn in, but those two at the very start are definitely the most frustrating of the ones that are presented uh, because they will prevent you from progressing and doing anything further. The other enemies that spawn in here include, but are not limited to, uh, opponents that will explode upon contact and opponents that will draw you in but they are a lot more manageable and not as hindering to the overall clear condition and inhibiting you from getting that clear condition against this leg of the fight. Now, why did I mention that this next leg is important for one of the other yeah, clear conditions here? Well, it's because one of the clear conditions that you need to keep in mind is that you need to deal 1.5 million or more uh, damage with extreme attacks. And this area in particular is a very beneficial way to do so because you are dealing increased amounts of damage with your EX abilities. And that will help accelerate your method of getting the, that clear condition. You can also use them in other legs as well, but where there's heightened damage coming from that phase, you're definitely going to get more of a benefit from using it there where possible and using them as frequently as you can as well. The fourth leg of this fight, or this gauntlet, and the fifth leg of this gauntlet actually have a lot to do with the fourth and final clear condition. And that is mainly due to some enemies that spawn in. They aren't available right off the bat. There are a couple of cursed aspects you need to be aware of, such as enemies that will explode, enemies with a burning aura. Uh, there are a couple of enemies that spawn in with a poison aura. Uh, just different quirks that you need to be mindful of as you take them on. And this is the enemy that I was mentioning. It's the cursed enemy, which has... Uh, a kind of some increased damage output to it, but it can also prove to be a benefit because if you happen to receive the curse from uh, one of your enemies or the infection from one of your enemies you're facing off against, upon defeating a cursed enemy or the cursed enemies in the vicinity, you will be able to uh, be cured of the infection, which can be beneficial and also harmful because on one hand, while you are cursed, you are dealing and re you are regaining some of your health back with the damage you deal. 
but it does tend to drain your health a lot faster than it, you can fill it up in some circumstances. So taking on and taking out the cursed enemies can certainly be a beneficial item to focus on when they come into play. And in order to get the fourth and final uh, clear on this gauntlet, you need to defeat 21 cursed enemies. In the first three legs of this gauntlet, there is not a single cursed enemy that shows up. But in the last two sections, this one has four cursed enemies that will show up. And the last one has two additional cursed enemies, plus the Morbius end boss who has the cursed aspect added to him as well. So that's a total of seven. So with a little bit of basic math, if you need to defeat 21 cursed enemies, that means that you need to run this gauntlet through its completion a total of three times in order to get that clear condition and claim that reward. And I know I mentioned earlier that the clear condition for some of the others was 155 shield emblems. It's actually in this gauntlet, the clear condition or the clear reward for all of these branches is getting the 155 shield tokens, which can then be used in the uh, shield store or the uh, shield depot as it's listed. And there are a couple of things that you can really get out of there. What I think is the most beneficial to spend those on is actually the alternate costumes for basically uh, all of the characters available, which a lot of them are really cool and uh, definitely worth adding to your collection. Now this final portion of the gauntlet, the thing that you really need to keep in mind is that in order to progress into the last phase of this gauntlet is you need to focus on and take down the two cursed enemies that spawn on either side of the arena. They will just kind of stand there unless they are interacted in or you encroach on their territory. So you might need to go out of your way and up onto this ledge to grab this guy. Uh, but once you've defeated both of them, the cursed variant of Morbius will come into play as well. And I was trying to use some of my extreme attacks to get some damage onto him, but Morbius can be a little bit slippery, especially where he can move away from you with some of his abilities where he just has increased movement speed. And additionally, he, if he scores a knockdown on you with his dash attack, he will become empowered. Uh, and that's in addition to the increased damage that you are receiving if he lands his paralyzing gaze on you as well. So where Morbius is up here on the cliffside, I am uh, doing what I can to get as much damage on him as I possibly can. He did unfortunately kind of get stuck up here in my particular run, which can actually be kind of beneficial. I just lay into him with a couple of ability attacks down here below the ledge, and that uh, allows us to get him down to his final uh, damage threshold and clears out that gauntlet. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. This one can be a little bit tricky to get all of the clear conditions out of. So if you found it helpful, please feel free to leave a like on the video. And don't forget to subscribe for more daily content as we have videos coming to you from different games every single day. Thanks again for watching, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.